Hi viewers, welcome to the next section of the course, Executors and Pools. In this section, we'll first look at the concurrent futures which includes executor objects and future objects. Then we will explore about setting callbacks and exception classes. Further, we will understand the concepts of process pool executors and ways to improve our crawler. Let us begin with the first video of the section, Concurrent Futures. In this video, we'll learn to create thread pool executor with context manager and shutting down executor object. Concurrent futures are a new feature added to Python in version 3.2. If you come from a Java based background, then you may be familiar with thread pool executor. Well, concurrent futures are Python's implementation of this thread pool executor concept. Let's begin with executor objects. The executor class falls within the concurrent futures module and provides us with the ability to execute a number of different calls in a concurrent fashion. Let's create a new document for Threadpool Executor program and name it as threadpool.py. The first step we need to know is how to define our own Threadpool executors. This is a rather simple one liner code, which looks something like this. In this command, we instantiate an instance of our Threadpool executor and pass in the maximum number of workers that we want it to have. In this case, we've defined it as three, which, essentially, means that this thread pool will only have three concurrent threads that can process any jobs that we submit to it. In order to give the threads within our thread pool executor something to do, we can call the submit function, which takes in a function as its primary parameter, and it looks like this. Let's take an example. Commenting single code line, we add this code snippet for the next example. In this example, we'll put together both the creation of our thread pool executor object and the submission of tasks to this newly instantiated object. We'll have a very simple task function that will simply sum up the numbers from 0 to 9 and then print the result. Following we defined the task function, we have our standard main function. It's within this that we define our executor object in a similar fashion to the aforementioned before then submitting two tasks to this new pool of threads. Save this file and execute the program in the terminal. Here we can see that rather bland output of both our tasks being executed and the result of our computation being printed out on the command line. We then utilize the threading current thread function in order to determine which thread has performed this task. We can see that the two values given as outputs are distinct daemon threads as you can observe here on the screen. The second, and possibly the most popular method of instantiating Threadpool Executor, is to use it as a context manager. So, let's create another document and name it as threadpool.exe.py. This is the code example to use context manager. This method does much the same job as the previous method we looked at, but, syntactically, it looks better and can be advantageous to us as developers in certain scenarios. Let's take a full-fledged example. We will comment the single-lined code and add this block of code. Here, we'll define a different task that takes in a variable n as input, just to give you a simple demonstration of how we can do this. The task function just prints out that it's processing n and nothing more. Within our main function, we utilize our thread pool executor as a context manager, and then call future executor submit task n three times in order to give our thread pool something to do. Save this file and switch to the terminal. On executing this program, we can see that it prints that we are starting the thread pool executor before going on to execute the three distinct tasks we submit to it, and then, finally, prints out that all tasks are complete message. Moving on to maps. First, we will create a new document and name it as threadpoolmaps.py. Maps in Python allow us to do cool things such as apply a certain function to every element within iterables like this. Thankfully, within Python, we can actually map all the elements of an iterator to a function and submit these as independent jobs to our thread pool executor as this code line. This essentially saves us from doing something far more verbose like this highlighted example. Let's comment these lines and add the code snippet of the example. 
In this example, we use this new map function in order to apply our multiply by 2 function to every value in our values array. Save this file and navigate to the terminal. As you can see, when we execute this program on the terminal, it does exactly what we expected it to, and prints out all of the multiplied results in our array after our map function has finished computing them. Proceeding with shutdown of executor object. When we shut down an executor object, what we are essentially doing is saying that it can't accept any further tasks. The tasks that were already underway by the executor object will still be finished after the call to shutdown, but trying to submit any further tasks to the said executor object will result in an error being thrown. Take an example. For that, we create a new document and name it as shutdownexecutor.py. Then we add the code snippet of the example and analyze it. In this example, we are going to demonstrate a shutdown of a running executor. We'll first define a function which will essentially work for n number of seconds. We'll submit a number of tasks and then call the shutdown method on our executor. After this point, we will attempt to submit yet more tasks to the executor. Save this file and execute it on the terminal. On executing this Python program, we can see that both task 1 and task 2 are successfully picked up and executed by our thread pool executor. After our call to execute a shutdown wait is equals to true, we can then see that a stack trace is printed out in our console, as our executor object does not accept any further tasks. That's all about executor objects, context manager, and shutting down executor objects.